The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Of course, when I say the Hebrew way, um, that concept, that word, is is new to a lot of our ears. Um, we've heard so much Jew um, that when you are the people, um, it's hard for you to realize. You know, where you come from and where you should be going and how you should be acting and how you should be behaving. Now, I'm making sense. Um, so this particular study here tonight is going to be on husbands and wives. Um, now, when you start off in marriage, you know, it, it should be until death do you part. And the reason why it doesn't happen like that a lot is because of the influences, the culture that we've been raised in. Um, our society is a very immoral society. Um, there's no truth in it whatsoever at all. Um, it is, when I say Yah forsaken, that means that they have not even included him in their thoughts whatsoever at all. Um, any righteousness that the world has ever learned, it comes from the laws, the statutes, and the commandments of the prophets, who was a spokesperson, an ambassador for the kingdom of Yah. Um, and a lot of us was not just bought up right at home. Um, so we didn't, we didn't have a blueprint, you know, what we could gauge um, as what is supposed to be of Yah and what's not. And then we find ourselves um, old. We haven't to learn the things by life experiences um, because they were not taught to us young. Um, oh, Elder um, Rabaski from up in the north sends his love towards and to everybody here at Straightway. Um, he knows Sister Ashley's voice. <laughs> um, and he's um, highly excited. The Most High Yah is giving him some land in, in Nevada, and um, he's hoping by the strength and power of the Father um, to do what we're doing. Um, doing a community and being on a community is not as easy uh, as it look when you come through the door. 
Uh, it takes what most people don't have, and that's a true heart. Um, you've got to be willing to endure hardships. Um, and so there's a lot of things even in communities that you would learn that you would never have the opportunity to learn when you don't live on one. And I know that. I can speak from that because I've lived both ways. So I can be an authority both ways. Um, I will tell you this, that I would not be at the place that I am at today if it was not for this community. Um, I would not know what I know today if I did not live a separated life from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Um, and I'm still learning um, because the desire of the community is to go to the great community um, where there will be righteousness and holiness uh, every day. Okay, but anyway, Elder Rabowski sends his love towards and to everybody here at Straightway. We're going to be in Esther, uh, the first chapter, and we'll start the 10th verse. But when you're starting off young in marriage and stuff, and then you have to listen to me real close. If the house is not ran by the law, statutes, and commandments, and the obedience of the Most High Yah, um, then the assembly will not be, land, or be, be ran by the Holy Spirit. Um, there's no way that you would be able to teach your children the ways of Yah if you're not living them yourself. Um, so in this walk that we're in, brothers and sisters, it requires a performance. Now what I'm going to be going over and the things I'm going to teach to you today, uh, as always, it's not my word. I'm a custodian of the word, an ambassador, um, a mouthpiece, and a spokesperson. I proclaim, herald, declare, and not only that, stand by it, stand for it, and is set for the defense of it. It also includes live by it. Am I making any sense? So these are his ways of the Hebraic people. And as I said before, uh, the Hebrew people were charged by the Most High. And I, and I made a statement earlier that, you know, we've been so used um, to using terms to deflect who we are um, that we don't really feel a sense of well-being, uh, a sense of belonging to, a sense of really truly knowing who we are when we're called outside of our name. Uh, there were Hebrews first, then there were Israelites. And it still stands today according to what the scripture says. When you hear the word Jew as spoken of in this time that we're living in, that word only covers one-twelfth of the tribes of Israel. When you understand the two houses the one house of Israel that was split into two. They called the southern tribes the house of Yehuda. And then the ten northern tribes was called the house of Israel. It's easy to distinguish who were the southern tribes because wherever the Levites were, um, they were going to be wherever the Ark of the Covenant was. And wherever the Most High had set up his authority. So you'll read in the book that Yehuda consists of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And then the rest were the ten northern tribes. So we're Hebrews and we're Israelites. Con contrary to what the Americans and the Europeans have done. Uh, through their ink spilling. They have spilled enough lies to fill up Lake Michigan. And they have played reverse psychology long enough with the people. They have toyed around with your minds. And as I said years ago, that's the reason why 
when these false prophets get up and start prophesying, um, we should be appalled. And at the same time, it should not strike us at odd that none of these prophecies ever come to pass. Because the people who are doing all these prophet lying are not qualified, nor are they called and ordained by the Most High Yah to even speak for him. So that's why none of your prophets or prophecies have come to pass. Because they're false prophets. And it's easy to see someone who's false because they do not keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Uh, Israelites do not have a problem with the Father. Uh, we do exactly what he says. Because we know that he is just, and he means what he says, and he says what he means. Am I making sense? So with all the new and young married couples, as well as the old, you can also learn something. It's, it's good for us to hear how we should be as the body of Christ. Now the man in the home is the representative of the Most High Yah. The woman is a representative of the assembly of Yah, or what you call the churches, or what the Greeks call synagogues. So there's an order that is established by the scriptures that in order for the home to function to where he is the one that is the authority and in control. We have to and we must follow the blueprint that is already given to us. That is laid out. Then harmony can be attained. When the husband and the wife is in their prospective places. If the husband or the wife is not in their prospective places, harmony will not nor will peace and we know peace, that word or that title is only given to one, one person, and that's the Messiah, uh, will not dwell in the house. Hallelujah. <clears throat> when people come here to the community, um, it never fails. Every single time they say there's so much peace here. And, of course, we understand that. We know the reason why there's so much peace here. We see because the Father is still striving with us. Uh, we're not perfect, but it's easy. You can be around us one week and see many imperfections. Um, just like if we came to live with you. It wouldn't take me one week. It would take me half a day to see many imperfections. Um, and that's not to say that anybody is better than anybody else. But the reason why that the Prince of Peace and his spirit dwells here is because we're striving. The word striving means that means... You know, we're actually going against resistance. There's some energy that is exerted. Am I making any sense? <clears throat> and we're striving to enter in at the straight gate because not only do we have spirits, demonic spirits and devils that we have to wrestle and fight against on a daily basis, uh, we have our own hearts that we have to fight against. And then we have to fight and wrestle against the hearts of spirits that may use our brothers and sisters. So we're in a spiritual warfare. Make no mistake about it. But the strength of the assembly is only as strong as the strength of the home. Am I making any sense, Israel? So what we're going to do is we're going to show you something from a pagan king who, believe it or not, actually was able to hear the voice of the Most High, even while Israel was in captivity. And we're going to see, because, you know, it had to be important for this pagan king um, and what he did. It had to be important to us if it's written down in the Scriptures. Hallelujah. And what we have, we, we have King Ahasuerus, who had a wife named Vestai. 
And Vestae, or what some people call Vesti, um, was a queen. But this queen had a different mindset than most women who would be in her position. I'll leave you to read the verse 10 verses, and we'll start at the 10th verse. And we'll see something here, okay? We're starting here first because...